Franklin's Thanksgiving story based on characters created by Paulette Bourgeois and Brenda Clark. Illustrated by Brenda Clark. Franklin liked everything about Thanksgiving. He liked eating pumpkin fly pie and cranberry jelly. He liked making cornucopias and corn husk dolls. But most of all, he liked having his grandma and grandpa come for dinner. It was the family tradition, and Franklin could hardly wait. A week before Thanksgiving, a postcard arrived from Franklin's grandparents. Oh dear, sighed Franklin's mother. Grandma and Grandpa can't make it back for the holiday. But they have to, cried Franklin. They're always here for Thanksgiving. Franklin's mother gave him a hug. There will still be the four of us, she said. It won't be the same, Franklin grumbled. Over the next few days, Franklin was so busy that he didn't have much time to think about Grandma and Grandpa. He helped his mother pick apples and make applesauce. He helped his father dig up vegetables and store them in the cellar. Franklin and Bear helped Harriet and Beatrice pick berries and gather nuts. In the gardens and orchards, forests and fields, everyone was bringing in the harvest. Franklin counted all the jars of jams and preserves. I think this year was the most bountiful ever, announced his father. We could feed the whole town. I just wish we could be Grandma and Grandpa, sighed Franklin. His mother agreed. We'll miss having company, she said. At school, Franklin's class made a harvest quilt and learned how the early settlers celebrated Thanksgiving. What are you doing for Thanksgiving, Mr. Owl? asked Franklin. I'll have dinner with my mother, he replied. Our relatives can't visit this year. Ours either, said Franklin. Then he had an idea. He invited Mr. Owl and his mother for dinner. It's all right with my parents, Franklin explained. They want company. Well, thank you, Franklin, said Mr. Owl. We'd be delighted to come. Franklin smiled. This would be a wonderful surprise for his parents. At home, Franklin's mother looked at the berry pies cooling on the windowsill. She had an idea. She walked over to Bear's house and invited the whole family for Thanksgiving. It will be a wonderful surprise for everyone, she explained. In the garden, Franklin's father waved to Mr. Mole. Are you going to your sister's for Thanksgiving, he asked. Not this year, replied Mr. Mole. With my broken ankle, I can't go far. Franklin's father had an idea. He invited Mr. Mole for dinner. It would be a wonderful surprise for everyone, he explained. After school, Franklin went home with Moose. That's when he had another idea. It was the Moose family's first Thanksgiving in Woodland. Franklin invited them for dinner. It's all right with my parents, he explained. They want company. We'd be delighted, replied Mrs. Moose. Franklin smiled. His surprise was getting bigger and bigger.
On Thanksgiving morning, Franklin got up early to help with dinner. He stirred soup and shucked corn. Then he set the table for nine. Franklin's father counted the place settings. He shook his head and reset the table for five. Franklin's mother looked at the table. She was puzzled, but she added three more place settings. And everyone took turns peeking out the window, watching for the surprise guests. Mr. Owl and his mother were the first to arrive. Surprise! Franklin shouted to his parents. This is a surprise, they exclaimed. Then Franklin saw the Bear family and Mr. Mole. Now everyone was surprised. All the guests crowded inside, holding platters and bowls heaped high with food. Franklin and his parents laughed and tried to explain what had happened. Well, we sure have plenty to eat, declared Franklin's mother. We just don't have plenty of room. Franklin knew they had a big problem. The Moose family hadn't arrived yet. Franklin looked around. There wasn't one bit of room inside. But outside, suddenly, Franklin knew what to do. Moose and his family arrived as all the others came out the door. Everyone carried food and dishes, tables and chairs. What's going on? asked Moose. We're eating our Thanksgiving dinner in the field, answered Bear. Just like the early settlers, said Franklin. It was a wonderful afternoon. Everyone ate lots of good food, and everyone said how thankful they were for good friends and family. Franklin was thankful for three helpings of pumpkin fly pie. I'm eating Grandma and Grandpa's share, he explained. Soon the sun was setting, and it was time to go home. This was a wonderful day, said Franklin's mother. Franklin agreed. Let's do it again next year, he said. Everyone laughed and cheered. Grandma and Grandpa phoned later that night, and Franklin told them all about the new Thanksgiving tradition. They promised that next year they wouldn't miss it for anything. Franklin smiled. He might not get three helpings of pumpkin fly pie next year, but he knew he'd still be thankful. The end. I hope you've enjoyed this story, Franklin's Thanksgiving. Grandma loved how Franklin thought, hmm, it's so crowded inside. Let's go out into the field like the early settlers did. That was very smart of Franklin. And I know he missed his grandma and grandpa, and I'm sure they missed him too. But next year, they can all have a big Thanksgiving and do it out in the field again. And this time, Grandma and Grandpa can come. Now, click that thumbs up button and let Grandma know how much you liked this story. And put in the comments below, who comes to have Thanksgiving dinner with you? Does your Grandma and Grandpa come? Or maybe your cousins, your aunts and uncles? Or maybe it's just your mom. Or maybe just your dad. Grandma usually has lots of people, but this year... I don't know. It might be a surprise. We'll see who shows up. <laughs> now make sure you come back and visit Grandma for more stories. Bye, Grandma.